Oh, you got a cat in the, the, the stream. I think that's the first cat, at least since I joined a year ago. This cannot be. I, I figured <laughs> everyone would have one popping on screen with this work from home situation. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Total War Live. We are here with the announcement of a Total War Saga Troy Amazons. And I have a new friend with me here today. We've got Victor. Hey! Thanks for having me, Blondie. And so thanks for everyone <laughs> for joining us on these last days of, of summer. Today, we're going to take a look at the new DLC that is coming out on uh, September 24th. Um, I want to remind everyone that it will be completely free as long as you link your uh, Epic Games account with your Total War Access account before October 8th. The first question we asked, Oops. what do we want to do in our first DLC? And we settled on the Amazons because they are the most different. We don't have elves, we cannot have robots, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a no-female roster is as different as it could have Ab been. We contacted professors, historians, archaeologists, all sort of people to help us identify who were actually the Amazons, because this is our hallmark uh, feature for this for this setting, for Troy, to discover the, the truth behind the myth. So in our portrayal of the Amazons, they are you know, a tribe of uh, predominantly uh, women warriors. There are men there, but they're more like servants. They're not allowed to take arms in most <laughs> cases. So uh, it's a much patriarchy for sure. Uh, I think the, the, the biggest uh, difference if you're playing an Amazon campaign is in the way they do recruitment, which it ties into the uh, initiation rights mechanic. As Amazons, you only recruit directly your basic troops, like, you know, female warriors in, the, in their early years who have just begun their training. They're armed with a, with a simple spear or a simple, you know, sword, maybe a shield, maybe, maybe a bow and arrows if, if you're lucky. The basic units are mostly shared between the two factions. There are a few examples to stress out the difference in the two rosters, the two philosophies, if you want, uh, to war that the two queens have. Uh, but most of their basic units are shared. From that point, you, you participate in battle with, us, with those women. They need to participate to actually prove themselves and uh, become stronger warriors. You, as a queen, you'll be able to say who gets to, you know, to be promoted to further training and to better equipment down the line. Uh, so you need experience for the unit. The progression of units is, I, I hope to say, I, I, I mean, you know, I'd like to say, I hope it is uh, like what you would expect from such a mechanic, like archer becomes archers, archers on chariots, archers on horses. Yeah. So you could see at the bottom row are the basic troops. The top rows are actually the upgrades. This is just like a, a map of the possible upgrades that we are mm. seeing at the moment on screen. Yes, so we can see uh, here furthest to the left, we have the Amazon Initiates. And as you build buildings and unlock various initiation rights, because they are not all available to you immediately, you have to unlock them as you go. You can see that we could either upgrade our initiates into this uh, spear and uh, shield heavy unit, or we could go into this spear and shield medium unit, which we then could upgrade into a cavalry unit. Also, you will notice that some of the units seem to have like dead ends. Yes. Uh, you know, some units could be upgraded all the way to level three while others stop at level two. This is intentional. And actually the level two units are special in some in some way when they you know end at level two. So it's mm. not a, like a net loss to just not uh, get them. They just uh, uh, fulfill a more specialized role on the battlefield. I think this initiation right system is really fun and it forces me to play the game in a very different way. As you mentioned earlier, you have to uh, rank up a unit to be able to uh, upgrade them. That means that if you lose a, a unit, you will have to recruit a new base unit and rank them up. And if you lose a level three unit, you're gonna have to start all the way over here. If you watch the streams, you know that my motto is that a Pyrrhic victory or Academy of victory, as in, in the case of Troy, is still a victory. With the Amazons, absolutely the not. <laughs> there are ways to mitigate your early mm. losses or you know an accidental loss of unit here and there yeah. all the other faction mechanics surrounding the amazons try to help uh with that particular issue we, we knew they would be more hungry for experience for troop experience so we've given them supplementary complementary mechanics that uh, 
help them gain experience faster or just start on a, on the you know when you recruit them they are higher rank so yeah it's a very good point um and i can show that off here so in this mm -hmm. campaign on hippolyta through the skill tree i've picked up a skill that allows me to uh start off new recruits immediately at rank one so you can see there's this uh icon here for uh, unit rank one. There are also buildings that assist in this, which means that you can speed up that. It can still be a quite devastating loss to lose some uh, units. I really enjoyed having to think differently about how I did battles instead of just going, here are my units, go. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some people right. in chat noticing that there's a new resource. This one is unique to Hippolyta. Mm -hmm. She's the only one that has it, which is Amazon Treasures. But we have the Amazon Kingdom as her other unique mechanic, which encompasses that. So what what is the Amazon Kingdom? Gameplay-wise, it's a it's a universal mechanic, a global for the, for the faction. It allows you to, to use different uh, powers, so let's say, different abilities, different actions to help you with various endeavors uh, in your whole kingdom. You need to have reached a certain amount of uh, Amazon treasures to be able to unlock them. You don't spend those those uh, Amazon treasures here. You just yeah. need to have them. This is sort of sort of to to limit the progression to that uh, you know certain high level powers only become available later on as your kingdom expands. And the special mm. resources are gathered by simply holding certain settlements that Hippolyta, you know, uh, finds uh, important. This is Hippolyta reclaiming her ancestral, you know, lands. And uh, th this helps them find who they are as Amazons, come together as a culture, as a nation, and hopefully develop an actual Amazon kingdom, which never happened mm. in, in yeah. history. Uh, but this is what Hippolyta fights in our game. As you see, you first reclaim your heritage. This is mm. your first step. Then you uh, gain some enlightenment. You start developing, uh, you know, uh, say a writing system or a, a, a common Amazon language, really, because they're from mixed origins anyway. The first one, yeah. So there are uh, instant level ups at the cost of Amazon treasures. I can demonstrate that now. Yeah, please do. Uh, so we have our Amazon chargers here, which are at unit rank three. I can go into uh, this here and instantly rank them up to rank four. You know, by end game, when you, you're fighting against your antagonist, um, you might be producing enough uh, Amazon's pre uh, treasures that you can have a that you can recruit a completely new army and still level them up quite quickly to uh, a decent rank with all the various bonuses that you can get. Hippolytus playstyle on the map itself, I would say, is tall rather than wide because she's incentivized to, to hold really those ancient uh, sacred settlements and sacred sites that you see them, uh, you know, by this, by this icon with the Amazon treasure in it. Mm. So you'd rather have few settlements that provide this resource than just paint them up the way it is with, with regular factions. Um, right, so here we have Penthes Leia. What, what is special about her? Why, why is she different from Hippolyta? She is the warrior queen of the Amazons, while Hippolyta is the high queen. So. Think of Hippolyta more like, I don't know, internal affairs and uh, government and uh, rule as a whole. Well, he, Penthesilla is more of a fighter. She, she is really just the, the leader of the fighters. And her army represents a warrior cult of Ares, in a sense. She's really, you know, obsessed with, with fighting and uh, her, her people, her faction is a horde. This is our take on the horde mechanic. We've done a few, uh, I would say, I, I would like to say uh, significant you know, changes to the to the formula of hordes, but uh, that's the idea. You don't hold settlements; you just roam them up, fight with people, prove yourself in front of the gods. There's a new icon here um, on uh, Procrastis, um, which we've never seen before. The economy and and the territorial conquest of horde factions, horde factions in our game is very different. Uh, because you, you don't produce resources on your own, you know, you're on the move. Uh, mm. You take resources from settlements that you go, and you could really see what each settlement has as a special bonus that your scouts have discovered for you beforehand, that uh, you know you will get extra if you attack that settlement. For example, mm. uh, Blonde is currently hovering over the, uh, a food bonus. You could uh, take this uh, settlement and you get, uh, in, 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 in addition to what raising a settlement normally would give the faction, this particular settlement will give that bonus. For example, yeah. the, the land in uh, Pro... Yeah, you pronounce that Pro... pro pro Procrastis? Okay. I don't know. Procrastis. It's all Greek to all me, right. man. That's, that settlement 
provides uh, s uh, siren units, uh, access to siren units. So they live there apparently, and uh, mm. you go there, you you raise the settlements, and you convince some of them to come follow you. You still need yes. to hire them, but uh, you know this is how they get access. Can they cannot build the buildings for mm. mythological units, so they they get everything by by fighting. So other than being a horde, she she of course has the initiation rights, same as um, Hippolyta, but she does not have access to the Amazon Kingdom, as we can see up here. Uh, what are the unique mechanics we're looking at here for Penthes Leia? Just click on the War Spoils mechanic. All right, so War is, Spoils. This is, this is just a, again, this is just a browser here, this particular screen. You don't do the actions here. This is just mm. a collection of, of all the possible War Spoils. This is the bonuses you get from raising settlements. If you mm. click on an icon here, you'll be taken to the nearest settlement with that particular War Spoil. So you yeah. could, uh, you know, plan your, your, your movement across the map. Once you take a settlement, once you raise it, uh, it will be a while before the bonus sort of response and you could go yeah. back there so you'd really need to you know plan a course across the campaign map uh, blood out well first this ties a bit to the initiation rights mechanic actually in the midst you know for an amazon warrior to be actually recognized as an amazon warrior they needed to kill three men so how this mechanic mm. works in the game the amazon hordes cannot reinforce each other they're too proud they all want to uh, you know earn their own place in the eyes of their father, their mythological father, Aris. So they want to, to really uh, gain fame on their own. As you play throughout the campaign, on the campaign map, you could gain the, the unique resource here, Battle Glory. Each army accumulates its own uh, Battle Glory, but you also have a faction-wide Battle Glory, which is the sum of you know all yeah. the Battle Glories of different armies. When an army fights, it accu accumulates Battle Glory. But the idea is that uh, once you have enough Battle Glory, you could uh, call this Blood Oath. And it will give you a really short-lived amount of additional units. For like a turn or two, you have access to really powerful Bloodsworn units. Uh, I would say one Bloodsworn unit is equal, I don't know, three, four normal units. And you get like, depending on how much Battle Glory you have, you get a different number of Bloodsworn units. Mm. And depending on what Blood Oath you have, it will... Uh, you know, it will affect the quality of those units. Worse, but I would yeah, say yeah. the Penthesilla definitely has is the only faction that has access to tier four units this Oof. way. So it's also worth mentioning that uh, with with the Blood Oath, uh, you can actually ex exceed the 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 twenty units per army limit. A full Battle Glory bar will give you the maximum amount of uh, uh, what sort of units, and there they should be uh, the equivalent of a second army. Her faction lends itself to the most unorthodox strategy, I would say, in, in Troy. One reason being a, a horde faction. And, you know, you could have, you could play very differently depending on how much you choose to uh, associate yourself, you know, develop the blood uh, oath and uh, the battle glory and how much you rely on more traditional, you know, get resources, build up your army slowly. Penthesilea is a bit more about javelins and uh, shock units in general, just uh, like oh, oh, fast, hard-hitting units, while Hippolyta is more about archers and uh, a front line. Her front line is still not as good as like mainstay, you know, uh, Greek Hector. Uh, heavy armor or Hector, yeah, absolutely Hector. First, thanks everyone for playing Troy. I hope you like the Amazons. I just want to read, uh, you know, the first uh, sentence that was like uh, in the Wikipedia page that, you know, brought me on board and uh, when people ask me why do we do you know the amazons just 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 listen to this this is the first sure. the first sentence um uh the amazons were the daughters of aris and harmonia they were brutal and aggressive and their main concern in life was war <laughs> Is this total oh. war material to you? I mean, you know? that 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 is total war. That's uh, oh. So, 